This episode brought to you by preparewithdronetech.com. Friends, big dangers are all around us these days. To survive what's coming, you need to be prepared and self-reliant. That's why I recommend getting yourself some cryptocurrency, some land, some gold, but especially a proper stockpile of emergency food. It's easier than you think. Go to preparewithdronetech.com right now and you'll save $50 and get free shipping on a generous four-week supply of emergency food from My Patriot Supply. Go to preparewithdronetech.com right now. That's preparewithdronetech.com. And it has been energy driving much of this. You've seen that. We've talked about gas prices. And those those prices have been moderating in the past few weeks. But demand is strong. I mean, this is a sign of a really strong economy, guys. People are rushing out all at the same time to buy the stuff they want. People were asked what their top economic concerns are. Take a look. Inflation, the top spot there with 39%. Does President Biden deserve the blame for this, Catherine? Should he be, should his approval rating be tied to this? Is, is Are these things under his control? So uh, I will say say the thing that I always say when asked about whether presidents um, are properly credited for economic conditions. Presidents get too much credit when the economy is good and too much blame when the economy is bad. Um, inflation is up not because of any particular thing that the president did. Uh, it's not Biden's fault. Uh, and to the same uh, idea, Biden has relatively little that he can do about it. You know, Republicans are blaming President Biden. And I always say presidents get too much credit and too much blame <laughs> for things like this. Gas prices are high because people are driving more. They're flying more as the economy reopens. That's a good thing. You know, one thing I hear a lot on social media is, well, gas prices are high because President Biden killed Keystone, mm. the Keystone XL pipeline. And, um, you know, that's just not the case. So listen, there's, there's no easy answers here. I mean, presidents don't have magic wands to just uh, make gas cheap, at least not in the United States. Here at home, Americans are finally getting some relief. Finally, right? Good news, people. We talk so much about bad news. Oh my gosh, inflation, blah, blah. This is good news. Gas prices are heading down. The government forecast, forecast says that they could drop below $3 a gallon. Whew. Finally, some economic relief, however minor. Americans are paying a little less at the pump after weeks of rising energy prices. Relief for the United States as energy costs drop. That pain that you've been feeling at the pump, it may be short-lived. There is finally some relief at the pump. Good news at the pump. Finally getting some relief, as you mentioned. The national average price of gas dropped four cents in the last week. Gas dropped nearly a nickel in the last week. It's a seven-week low. It's moving in the right direction. The average is now at a seven-week low. Actually, a seven-week low. Slightly lower gas prices, so that's good news. Yeah, this is the kind of positive news we've wanted. You know, one thing I hear a lot on social media is, well, gas prices are high because President Biden killed Keystone, mm. the Keystone XL pipeline. And, um, you know, that's just not the case. So listen, there's, there's no easy answers here. I mean, presidents don't have magic wands to just uh, make gas cheap, at least not in the United States. Today, the United States is the largest producer of oil and gas in the world. It can ramp up production and exports and help turn on spigots in other countries. Joe Biden is worried that he's going to look like Jimmy Carter when his power position is actually more like that of the king of Saudi Arabia. President Biden should announce that he is going to respond to this massive challenge to the international order by expediting as much production and export of American petroleum as possible to replace Russian energy. With natural gas, he should urge his regulators to facilitate production. And he should help more with the financing of liquefied natural gas so that it can be sent to Europe quickly. He should also encourage countries like Japan and South Korea to divert more of their LNG to Europe. They have alternative air energy sources. Some of this will take time to happen, but markets will react to the signals and to new supplies and prices will fall. 
No shit! That's what people like me have been saying since Biden took office! As if it takes a professional journalist or a guy like Joe Biden to figure this one out. It just makes logical sense. You can't just cut off fossil fuels cold turkey to keep with the drug addiction analogy that they like to use so often. You can't do that because all you end up doing is giving your worst enemies, the worst people in the world, an advantage over you. Why? Because you're gonna be dependent on them for the oil that you refuse to drill in your own country where if you did so, you would be completely independent. No, wait, let me guess. Your entire policy is based on the advice from a teenager with Asperger's. Not that I have anything against anybody with Asperger's, but come on! I'm gonna take another wild guess here and say that CNN's turn on a dime narrative shift has something to do with the fact that Rasmussen Reports is now reporting that 70% of America favor increased U.S. oil and gas production. This mirrors my own poll in the community tab at my channel, which you should go check out when you're done here. But the scary thing is here, it does not take a particularly smart individual to know that this is the way to go. Given that we're nowhere near reusable energy replacing fossil fuels, and given the fact that America has enough oil and other resources to be energy independent, it does not take a rocket scientist to know that we need to be drilling and doing whatever we can to get our own oil. Otherwise, we're dependent on other countries for oil, countries who don't give a damn about the environment, and guess what? Getting that oil from those countries takes even more energy that's even more pollution. I swear, we need to stop listening to these far left environmental cultists because they're gonna take this country to a national suicide. All right, folks, that's all I have for that one. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Also, leave me a comment to let us all know what you think.